Hey, it's the Good Advice Show, and this is the place to grow your business. If you've been thinking about what are the next steps for your business, how can you do business better? I'm not just talking about sales, I'm not just talking about marketing, but even the crazy game of management. We talk about it all on this show, and I want to welcome you to checking out the show today. My name is Blake Benz. I'm your host. I'm the founder of Good Advice and the Good Advice Podcast. Don't forget, you can check out the podcast with over 300 episodes on literally any podcast platform. And if you're a business who's been thinking about advertising your business, don't forget you can also check out one of those nice little ad spots at the start of every episode. Got a lot to talk about today, a lot of fun stuff to dig into, especially as you're thinking about your aspirations for 2023 and the big things that you want to see happen. We're going to be digging into it today, especially what you should not not be doing, what you should not be thinking about, and one of the worst mistakes you can make when it comes to the sales game of your business. All of that and more is on today's episode, but before we do that, we have a word from our sponsor coming up now. Hey, are you tired of all the paperwork that you're doing in your landscaping business? Then I got to tell you about what Steve Lay is doing over at bookkeepingforlandscaping.com. He wants to take the mess out of your business and more importantly, get you back to focusing on what you care most about, which is all your awesome, amazing landscaping customers. If you've been staying up till 11 o'clock at night working on your books covered up in paperwork, then you want to give Steve a call who can help simplify your books so that that you can focus on actually running your business. Again, you can find out more at bookkeepingforlandscaping.com. That's today's sponsor. Enjoy the show. All right, what a show we got planned today. Got a lot of good stuff to talk about. I'm feeling a little feisty today, which if you listen to the podcast long term, you would know that when I say feisty, it's pretty basic. <laughs> it's basic things to talk about, but it no doubt always ends up frustrating someone. You know, I've been thinking a lot about this year. I've been thinking about, you know, what do I want to accomplish with good advice? And we got a lot of exciting things happening with the podcast, uh, exciting things happening with the business. And at my weekly growth group meetup, which is on Tuesday mornings at 9 a.m., where we have local business owners who come, they chat about their businesses, and we try to grow each other's business. It's called a growth group because it's not like a, a slimy sales meeting. You know, those networking events you go to where like everyone's selling each other. And it's like, who do I have like a real conversation with? This is that meeting where you get a cup of coffee, you sit down and it's like, okay, let's talk business today. Let's talk. Let's talk tough customers. Let's talk great customers. Let's, let's talk turning the average customer into your super fan, which if you didn't check out our last week's show, you got to check out our podcast episode on creating your super fans. Uh, again, that's on our podcast. Uh, you can find the good advice podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts, but especially you can go to podfollow.com slash good advice and it'll get you there. But I've been thinking a lot about the year. I've been talking already with different business owners who have been thinking about a lot of different things. And there's really, there's really two things that I think happen this time of year. And I want to address both of them separately. They're, they're related in that there are people who are thinking about one or the other, or they're thinking about both. And those two things are, first, I think it's people around this time of year begin thinking about totally retooling their business. Like, what do I want to change? And, and, and I'm not any different from that, by the way. I mean, I'm thinking it for myself. What do I want to do different? How do I want to change the business? <clears throat> so sorry, guys. Excuse me. Um, you know, what, what do I want to break? What do I want to just tear down and start over with? What's something that maybe I've always sold that I never want to sell again? What's something that people have been telling me, Hey, you should really do this, that I've been resistant or hesitant to do that. Now I'm totally going to do it. So you have the people who are totally deconstructing, reorganizing their business. And then there is another group of people who have rediscovered uh, a zest for their business and excitement for their business. And they're hungry this time of year. They're hungry for those big sales, that big next step for the business, that big benchmark for the business. You know, that feeling where I always love the image of... Um, it's like what people think business ownership or entrepreneurship, whatever title you want to use, what people think entrepreneurship is like, and it's the straight line, like up, 
like from point A to point B, that's what it is. And then it's like what entrepreneurship is actually like. And there's like the squiggly line and it's all over the place. And then there's another graphic that I've seen too, where, you know, it's, it's a similar graphic where someone's like, you know, when people think quitting your job and starting your business is like, and it's someone who's like, you know, smiley face and like up and up and yeah. And then what it's actually like, and you have this person who, you know, they're cheering and then the next graphic, they're like, you know, hands in their face on their knees crying. And then like another one, they're like literally just lying on the floor prone. <laughs> and there's another one they're like, you know, kind of nodding like, yeah, I can do this. Uh, and that is absolutely business ownership. Um, I think anyone who would tell you otherwise, like sometimes I do catch glimpses of these other shows or like business leaders who are like, oh yeah, every day I'm after it. Every year I'm getting after it. And I'm kind of like, <sighs> I'm like, really, really? Now, I, I, that's not to say that there isn't something to be said about consistency, resiliency, determination. Like these are things, these are muscles that you grow and develop over time. You know, as you face adversity, you develop a callousness of, um, callousness is the wrong word, I think. You develop a, it's the word I used earlier, you develop a resiliency to be able to handle those setbacks and bounce back quicker, I think. But, you know, I, I think this journey of entrepreneurship where you have those good days and those not so good days is literally just being human. It's normal, right? I mean, it's literally what um, life is like sometimes. So all that to say, this is the time of year that people tend to be pretty optimistic about their business and they start because of their excitement, they start to think about their sales, uh, their sales pipeline, you know, the revenue, if you're, if you have like a fiscal year that you're, you're, you're your year follows the fiscal year or the calendar year, excuse me. Um, this is the time of year where you might be thinking like, yeah, what, what's going to be the number this year? Like I did this much last year. How much could I do this year? And I want to address both of these groups, the sales groups and the internal rehab deconstruction group. Um, and it's not to say that either of these things are bad, by the way. Um, I think these moments of zestfulness, of excitement, I think it's great. Anything that brings you new creativity for your business, you know, time that you get, you know, especially time over winter break, uh, the holidays, what have you, you know, when you're traveling or with family and you have some downtime and you start to think about the business and you start to have those new ideas, it's very exciting. In fact, I think everyone should try to build that time in to their life every month you know, taking like the last Friday off of the month to dream and think about what's possible. Uh, I had a guy one time who uh, was telling me about his business and he was like, man, if I could just get a couple of hours a month to think about the business. And I was like, yeah, that's something you're going to have to build into. It doesn't come naturally, right? Because there's always something to work on. There's always a fire to fight. There's always that next customer to work with. There's always opportunities and setbacks to try to work through. And so that intentional time is called intentional time because you have to be intentional in setting it and creating it, right? So having said that, as you've been thinking about your business, I want to help you process some of these things today. Um, and I mentioned, I'm going to talk to you about what not to do. Uh, that's going to fall more into the bucket of the sales world only. And I even called this episode a little bit of a spicy episode because I'm sure some of our listeners, they, what I'm going to talk about today, like this is you, this is how you approach sales. Um, if you've been listening long-term, it's probably not you because, um, you know, I'd say the people who are doing this incorrectly have probably weeded themselves out. It never fails whenever like someone listens to the podcast. Uh, they listen to an episode where they're like, I disagree with that completely. And they stop listening to the show, you know, what have you. So all that to say, let's talk about prioritizing your time, prioritizing what you want to work on for your business. You know, it's a time of the year where you probably have a lot of optimism and excitement about what's possible for your business. In fact, you may even be in a position where you're thinking, you know what, I'm going to invest some money into my business. I'm going to hire some coaching, consulting. I'm going to be part of a mastermind. I'm going to join this program. And none of those things, by the way, are bad. I don't have any issue with those things. Um, I will say as a caveat that if you're going to invest in one of those things, you should get absolutely as critically specific as possible as you can 
with what that program is going to do for you. And I'm fully entrenched in this world. I've talked to a lot of bad actors who uh, will say things like, you know, where's your business today? Oh, it's a $300,000 business. Okay. Where do you want it to be one year from now? Oh man, it'd be great if it was a million dollars or they say like, Oh, it'd be great if it was 700 K. Well, why stop there? Why not a million? Well, yeah, a million would be great. Well, what would it be worth it to you to go from 300 K to a million? Well, it'd be worth a lot. Hey, I'll show you how for $5,000 or this $2,000 program. And I'm going to walk you through, I'm going to help you make it happen. Like that stuff is pretty scummy. Usually doesn't go anywhere. And it's usually like a greasy car salesperson who's trying to really take advantage of you. So as you think about your new year, deconstructing your business, you know, what do I ultimately offer? Uh, What I would challenge you to think about as you reflect on the previous year of your business and you start thinking about what you want to change. What I would challenge you to think about is considering at the end of the day, first of all, what is your hedgehog? Which you might be like, wait, what did I just hear him say? (laughs) What is your hedgehog? And I call it a hedgehog. It's actually from the book, Good to Great. It's one of my all-time favorite books in business. It's called Good to Great. It's by Jim Collins. And he has this concept in the book. But he basically says, your hedgehog, like what's a hedgehog good at? What what is a hedgehog known for other than Sonic the Hedgehog? Uh, A hedgehog can do one thing and one thing only. It can ball up and, you know, it's got the prickly little spikes. And that is what it's known for really well. It's not known for being a good swimmer, which I'm not saying they can't swim. Maybe they can swim. I don't know, but it's not known for that. It's not known for flying. It's not known for, you know, consuming 10 times its weight or anything random like that. It's known for its physical characteristic. It's prickly spikes. I would say if you haven't figured this out for your business yet, it's an important thing to consider. What is my business known for? What's the hedgehog of my business? It's, it's a little bit different than your niche because I think niche speaks to your strategy around the kinds of customers you're going to go after. Like our niche is going to be this demographic. Um, so it's different from that. But ultimately what we're talking about is at the end of the day, what is the differentiator for your business? And my friend, David Breyer, who he, he's a big branding guy. He's got great branding content pretty much everywhere. Does really well. Um, he has said it really well before on, um, when it comes to differentiating, a lot of people get this wrong. They think, they think you are different for the sake of being different. And if that's true, then like, why not be, you know, why not be the AC repair guy who wears a funny hat and like a, you know, fake glasses, like that's different. Well, it'd be ridiculous. Like you get laughed out of the room. Like no one would ever take you seriously. But often what ends up happening is what we think is actually different really isn't all that different uh, in the customer's eyes. You know, it's like, we're the only ones offering this service. Or actually, here's a great example that's like from an actual customer of mine. A customer of mine was a in-home uh, um, organizer. So she would come in and, uh, you know, totally overhaul your closet, make it look amazing. Uh, and they're an amazing business, by the way. Well, one thing that was a differentiator for her was part of her process. Hey, we will build out your design via Pinterest before you ever go through with it. Now, what ended up happening in our work together, it was, hey, this is really taking up a lot of your time because every customer that you acquire, you can't just go do the work. You have to do the whole Pinterest thing for them, right? So my advice to her was, hey, I think your customers, I think Pinterest isn't the differentiator. I think it's actually the work you're doing. And this was probably, I don't know, maybe two or three years ago. Well, we had coffee the other day and she said she was in this weird position where a customer hired her and also hired a competing company at the same time. Like was like, hey, yeah, I just want to try both out and make it happen. So she's in the home doing a little bit of work while this other company is also in the home. They're like keeping to their spaces. Well, her work's actually pretty small compared to this other company. The day goes by, the next day comes, the customer calls her and is like, hey, that little work you did was infinitely better 
than what this competing company did. Like this competing company that I spent the most money on and gave the most hours to did terrible. I want more of what you're doing. Like that is the differentiator that gets spoken to. And if you haven't figured that out yet, if you don't have that um, articulated or characterized in a way that's tangible, like that is what good marketing is. That is what good uh, branding is, is that people can see it, taste it, touch it, what have you. I had, had an old boss years ago who defined it really well for me. He was talking about his time at this um, this <laughs> corn company, basically. So they sold canned corn. And he's in this meeting where one of his colleagues is trying to sell like Walmart or Costco or whoever, um, basically trying to say, hey, I want you to put our can of corn on the shelf. Well, what ends up happening is his colleague, uh, and this is such like a classic thing, but his colleague has the competitor's can of corn that's on the shelf at this grocery store chain or whatever. And then he has his can of corn. So, you know, opens up the competitor's can of corn, dumps it. It's um, kind of slimy. There's a lot of water. It spills out onto the plate and off the plate. Uh, the corn looks kind of faded and a bit mushy. And he's like, yeah, this is the corn that you have in your store right now. Here's our can of corn. And so they he opens it up and he turns it. A lot less water, this shiny, vibrant um, firm yellow corn that looks infinitely more appetizing than the competitor. And you can probably guess what that national store did. They said, yeah, we want to go with your corn. You win the contract. It's yours. That is how your business should operate. People should be able to tangibly sense, feel, touch, taste the difference in what you're selling versus what one of your competitors are selling. Now, that's not to say that that all has to be there up front. Some of this is built into like the customer process. Some of it's built into the customer experience that once someone says yes to you, you build this out intentionally. But all this to say, as you think about what to work on for your business this year, my advice would be to really hone in on not even necessarily what's irreplaceable about you, but it's just simply different. Sometimes different is enough compared to being better. Sometimes different is enough of a pattern interrupter in our daily shopping habits more than being, because even like, think about this for a second. Whenever you see like, you know, what's the little poster thing that's like cityscapes, uh, you know, the best breakfast place of 2022, or, you know, this magazine's, you know, the best lunch spot 2023. And sometimes it's like so specific that you're like, I mean, you know, did they invent this category just for this business? You know, it's like the best breakfast spot that sells cinnamon rolls that aren't made with flour, you know, and it's like, okay, this is obviously made for you. But when we see those things, like we live in a culture today that when we see those things, they really don't resonate that much. It's like, yeah, it's kind of like these things are given out so often that what do they even really mean anymore? So sometimes different does more for your business than, um, you know, being the world's best or the number one accolade or what have you. I know for my business, the way that worked for me is, you know, so I do, I do business coaching consulting, but basically we're building out systems for businesses that you can pick up and play with and put on your business to run your business better. No more 80 hour weeks, uh, no more peaked revenue. I mean, we basically break the ceiling and continue to grow your business. But one of the differentiators that I built in with that was, um, the digital side of the business. We're hyper-focused on digital. We're hyper-focused on um, content that feeds into what we sell. And it's a lot different from, frankly, a lot of competitors who what they sell you is a binder, a strategic plan, a, um, you know, we're going to meet seven times over the next seven months. And it's, it's just different. I've had customers tell me it's just different. So it's not to say it's perfect, uh, I think this goes back to the deconstructing deconstruction part of your business is it's important to think about what's working and what isn't. And when you think about it from, when you think about that concept, it's also important to frankly, get really over yourself and accept what's not working, even if you love it. So I'll say that again, there's things in your business that you love and adore, but you have no reason to sell. 
Like you have no business selling. It's not profitable for your business. It's not meaningful for your customers. You're not creating real transformation or change or impact for your customers. You do it because you like it. Uh, and that's not to wound you. <laughs> that's not to give you a, you know, create pain for you, but it is to remind you that, you know, it's your, your business's success is directly tied to how eager you are in impacting your customers, not living out whatever dream or fantasy you have for yourself. So all that to say, as you are organizing your business, reorganizing your business, um, you know, hone in on what's working, even if it's not sexy, stop doing the things that aren't working. Even if you are desperately wanting to be the person who sells that, does that, whatever. Um, and most importantly, make sure you're mindful of what makes your business different. And if you haven't figured that out yet, the sooner you figure that out, the faster you will see an exponential change for your business. Uh, when it comes to sales and marketing, <clears throat> excuse me, guys, I've had this sickness this cold for about two weeks now. Uh, and naturally I have this cough that I can't seem to get rid of. So speaking of exponentially transforming the sales world of your business, that's the second half of this episode. I say half, we got about maybe five minutes left of the episode. I want to talk about when you think about sales, you may be I think the phrasing I used was you may be full of zest and excited and I'm going to get out there and I'm going to sell and I'm going to make it happen. I want to remind you about a tried and true, um, a tried and true truth for your business. Something that has just been proven to work again and again and again is understanding that what the amount of money you want to make is directly tied to how intentional you are with the people you are selling to. And what I mean by that is that if you are selling a glass of lemonade on a street corner, um, literally your success is directly tied to the amount of people you say, hey, would you like to buy a glass of lemonade? So you sell it for a quarter or 50 cents or in today's inflation, maybe it's $2 for a glass of lemonade. And you say, hey, it's home, you know, and whatever fun buzzwords you put on it. It's fresh squeezed. It's, you know, this, it's that. But your success with it is literally, it's going to, I'm going to choose the street corner that has the most people there. What has happened, though, in today's sales world is we've taken that same ideology and we've applied it to literally anything else. And so what ends up happening is in the previous example, it's a hot day. You're selling on a busy street corner. Hey, you want a glass of lemonade, yada, yada. And we've taken that ideology to now it is the middle of Wisconsin in the bleak of night in a winter storm. And you're hoping someone drives by and that they feel sorry enough for you to buy your lemonade. And you're not just selling the glass of lemonade. You are selling the entire um, frozen uh, igloo of it. You're selling the entire, uh, what's it called? The nice brand cooler, uh, Yeti cooler for it. Um, please sponsor our, our show, by the way. Um, you know, it, it's, it's reeks with desperation. It communicates, you know, it's, it's, you're trying to sell way more than the average person would ever want. And I say this because I continue to be inundated with this kind of spam in my email, in my LinkedIn. Um, in fact, I'll just give you, I'll pull up an email real quick and give you an example. Um, I got this email that says, Hey Blake, I found you through LinkedIn. So I use LinkedIn a lot. I, I knew it was probably spam, but I wanted to open up anyway. So I open it up. It says, Hey Blake, I found you through LinkedIn and I thought you might need my software development help. Why would you think that I need your software development help? And then it reads, you know, our business is a technology and custom software development company. By the way, this is something just, just totally as a random aside, you, you need to understand that no one cares about your business. Like no one gives a flying flip about your business. And I say that because again and again, what ends up happening is it's, it's like, it's like someone out there must be selling. Like the only way I can, I can consciously understand why this happens is that someone out there must be selling this 
in some form. I don't know. Like, this is the script. This is the thing you say. I, I have no idea. It's the only way I can figure out why everyone's doing this. But it's like the the disingenuous starter line. Hey, I saw that we're both, you know, uh, we're both basketball fans. Hey, I see that we're both, you wore a red shirt today. I have a red shirt. Hey, while I have you, you know, it's whatever that disingenuous thing is, because we all know it's total BS. And then the thing that drives me crazy is the paragraph about your business. So this one, this person said, I found you through LinkedIn. I thought you might be looking for some software help. And then they give me the paragraph. Our business is a technology and custom software development company with a team of 150 software engineers has been serving the US and UK markets for over 17 years. We build custom software solutions and provide technical staff and staff augmentation to market leaders. I'd love to connect and see if I can help you with our, your software development needs. Like this stuff drives me crazy because it it at its root, it's a simple misunderstanding of how sales works, which is if I'm going to buy from you, it's not because I've met you and need you. If I'm going to buy from you, it's because in our brief interaction, it's a screaming, a screaming child in the background, in our brief interaction, there is a clue that you might be willing to solve my problem. So the focus isn't on you. The focus is on me and the best salespeople are able to communicate that better than ever. So don't be desperate in sales. Don't be um, surface in sales. Be intentional and communicate that this is an individual that you're actually talking to, working with, connecting with, and it'll up level your sale, your sales. I mean, for real, be totally, and if nothing else, it, it'll be different from what we're getting in our inboxes. And remember different is way better than better. So, Hey, that's our show for today. If you enjoyed the show, don't forget, you can check out our podcast, the good advice podcast. We got over 300 episodes. You can find it on any uh, podcast platform. You can also go to podfollow.com slash good advice. And on top of that, we also have continuing, we're continuing to bring you great content uh, on the show. I'm excited to do it for this year and excited to be part of the business journey with you. That's today's episode. I'll catch you later. See ya.